Hello world, Prof Mike Green here, talking about metadata. And we're not gonna get into the whole metadata and online privacy discussion in this video. We're gonna save that for another time. Here, what we wanna do is kind of get an understanding of really what metadata means as a term. The definition you always hear is it's data about data. That's what the meta prefix stands uh, for. But what the heck does that really mean? Seems like a pretty awful definition, data about data. This web page I've linked to you from The Guardian is a great example of the kinds of metadata that are out there in the things we do every day using technology. You can select the different ones that you use. Some of us might use all of these, but I just want to talk about a couple. The first of which uh, is your digital camera, whether that's your smartphone or a Nikon D70 or whatever. Every time you take a photo, a digital photo with a camera, it saves metadata about that particular image with the image itself. So you get the image, the file, the piece of data, but you also get this metadata that describes the image. And these are some of the examples. Uh, when it was created, date and time, location, especially if you're on your smartphone. Um, and then you get things like camera information. If you're a photography buff, these things will make sense to you. It saves all of these little bits of data about that particular photo with the photo itself. So what I've got here is um, some photos we had taken uh, when our son was born. And you can see I've got this image here and the details. Yes, it's a file. Yes, it's a digital, digital image, but it's also got a timestamp. When was this created? What kind of camera was this shot on? How big of the file is it? And then we've got some really detailed photographic metadata about that. For this next example, we're going to take a look at this spreadsheet, one of the most popular uh, forms of data within an organization. And just like the digital images, there are pieces of metadata that describe this, uh, a date and time it was created, a user that created it, things along those lines. But when we actually take a look at what's inside the spreadsheet, uh, we can see that there is another set of metadata very common in spreadsheets, and that's this the, the column or row headings, right? Each one of these row headings here, subject, describes all of the information that's in this column. Days, sessions, start, whatever it is, they describe the information in that column. And so you can think that subject is metadata that describes this column of data within that spreadsheet, okay? Now let's work our way up the DIKW pyramid. So um, a column or even an individual cell can be considered data. Up next is information, linked data, meaning that there's a relationship. So how do these different cells relate to one another? Well, if I look at a row, I can say uh, these things, uh, we can start to look at this and say, oh, this, this is a course and these things relate to one another because they're all describing data about a specific course. How about how do the rows relate to the entire spreadsheet as a whole? Well, we look at this and say, oh, this these are courses at the college. This is the college schedule. So that's the link. That's the relationship between row five and row seven, that they're all courses at the college. Uh, we can go up the next level, knowledge, organized information, meaning there's a pattern. And the brain is insanely good at detecting patterns, quite often uh, better than, than computers. Um, we can say, what's the pattern here? What's the organization? I look at this first column and say, oh, that looks alphabetic. And within that, if I've got multiple ACCs, there seems to be a second level of organization, uh, numeric. And it's pretty quickly we can see that that's how this is organized. And and the pattern is, well, uh, what if we're talking about ITE? That's what this course is. So how could I find it? I, I could find it reliably because I see the pattern, because I see the organizational structure. I know the alphabet. I can scroll down here and boom, here's my ITE courses. If this was organized by an, another means, uh, for example, if we just did that really quickly and started looking, you might say, wow, this is random seems to be unorganized, especially if I didn't look over here and notice, oh, that this is numerically ranked. We would say this, I don't think I could reliably know anything about what's going to come next because I can't see the organizational structure here. I can't see the pattern. Let me undo that. 
the top level wisdom, right? Applying the knowledge. There's a principle. Uh, in this example, that could be simply, I know that I need ITE 119 for my degree to graduate. If I use the knowledge I have to find it in this, I can say, oh, these are, um, they're almost full. Start to apply what this information and knowledge means. 29 out of 30 means there's only one slot let. It would be wise, it would be a good decision for me to register quickly so that I can go ahead and take this course. So that's an example of metadata and how it applies throughout the DIKW pyramid. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.